we now know what we've got. We've got a new member of the genus Homo, a species that we're going to call Homo naledi. It's day 29 of a 30-day workshop that is entirely designed to describe and study the first generation of papers on the material from Rising Star. I brought together around 40 to 45 people at any one time with uh, about 30 to 32 early career scientists. They brought an entirely unique skill set as well as differences of opinion from different backgrounds and training so that we were sure that we would be looking at these fossils to see whether we could efficiently go through this material in a way no one's ever done before. So this is the most complete piece of the pelvis that we have. There's not a whole lot there, but there's actually some very important morphologies preserved on this piece. So all these bones were found together, they all come from the same individual, they all come from the same side. But we don't obviously want to glue the original, so we're doing it with 3D printer. Anyone who walked into that room would feel the intellectual and scientific buzz. You could actually feel the room vibrating with it. It's an amazing experience. Uh, I've learned tons. So the axial skeleton really took a beating uh, in, in preservation, so we've got lots of little pieces. So in, in overall size, if we take a look at our vertebra, it's very, very tiny. Um, if we compare it to the smallest known Australopithecus vertebra of a similar level, that belonging to Lucy from Australopithecus afarensis, you can see that, that our vertebra is actually a fair amount smaller than that of Lucy. In terms of the cranial team, I didn't know anyone. And we are uh, six uh, ladies, <laughs> all early career scientists, just got together and we just started working it. You know, two of us went off and did the metric stuff. Two of us went off and did non-metrics and the other two did um, the writing. So it worked really, 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 really well. Every piece of body has kind of the, like its own story and that now you have to combine, co combine all of it and come to a kind of solution for the whole sample. No, 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 that is not. We work in a pretty contentious field, so I had some fears that there might be some things that were controversial that people wouldn't want to say, that you're going to have uh, infighting among, among the various uh, groups, but it hasn't been that way at all. Um, I would say it has been a very positive experience. Just the sheer magnitude of material is awesome. And um, yeah, it's good to be South African. The teeth in the maxilla are, are offset posteriorly. Right. So the maxillary M3 can't touch the mandibular M2. Right. Yeah. All these different experts are able to bounce questions in a moment off of each other, cross pollination, scientific ideas. You make less mistakes that way. I'll bet you that we've spent more on in this month in person hours working on this material than most teams spend in years and years and years working on their material. I learned that the people who go into paleoanthropology and study it do it for love and passion and when you let them loose on these fossils, they create extraordinary things because they're passionate about it.